how much we can bear. is on fire this morning. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. It's a privilege. It's an honor to be here as God's special guest on another Lord's Day. I thank God for Jesus and his love that he have demonstrated. I said demonstrated for us. Amen. In order for there to be preaching in the pulpit, there got to be some praying in the pews. And I know you all are praying for me. Amen. I appreciate it. I want to thank God for these preachers and the officers. The ushers who stands on the Lord's door. And all of you, my father's children. I just want to recognize Brother Greg family members who are here with us. All the way there. Amen. God bless you. They are not no first-time visitors, but they are friends of ours. All the way from M-I-S-S-I-P-P-I. That's how I, that's how, that's how I learned to spell it. But we have blessed to have him here, especially with him on this special occasion, and we are thankful to all our friends who have come to be a part of this worship service. There's a word that comes to us from one of the the most easiest book to find in the Bible. And if it's not Revelation, it got to be Genesis. It's the 31st chapter. And I just want to focus on one verse, verse 13.
And it says, I am the God of Bethel, where thou anointed the pillar and where thou bows a bow unto me. Now a ride. Get thee out from this land and return unto the land of thy kindred. Ye may be seated. I just want to use one word, Brother Marcus, anointed. Even though this is the first place that we see the word anointed being used in the Bible, it occurs 161 times and 19 of these times are found in the New Testament. However, in the book of Genesis, this is the first time that we see the word anointed appearing. Let's take a look at the context in which this verse appears. It focuses upon a character by the name of Jacob. Most of us who have spent any time with the Lord in studying the Lord's word recognize that Jacob was labored as a trickster. He's the one who stole his brother Esau birthright. And after stealing his brother's birthright, Jacob became the first known fugitive from justice who was on the run and never could go back home. Are you going to pray with me? After fleeing from his brother Esau, Jacob ended up working for his uncle Laman, who was his mother's brother. While working for his uncle Laman, he saw and met and fell in love with his soulmate by the name of Rachel, who made his liver quiver, his toes curl with her Coca-Cola bottle thicker. Now, I don't know this to be so, but the record go that love will make you do some foolish stuff. Are you going to pray with me? Oh, yes, it will. If you don't believe me, watch this. Jacob made a deal with Laman, racial father, to work seven years for her hand in marriage. Greg, <laughs> J 
Jacob was ecstatic while working for Laman during those seven years, thinking about his baby, Rachel, his wife to be. However, at the end of the seven years, Laman didn't keep his part of the bargain. During the night of the wedding, Laman switched sisters. It's right there in the book. And Jacob slept all night long with Leah. Somebody missed that. I said he slept all night long with Leah. Rachel, old sister. I don't know how it looked to you, but it just seemed like, seemed like to me that Jacob wanted the best of two worlds. Now that's what it seemed like to me. It took him all night long to find out that he wasn't with that tripped me out now he loved with Rachel and he spent all night with Leah, somebody else, and he couldn't tell the difference. So, after discovering he had been tricked, he agreed to work another seven years in order to marry Rachel. After another seven years has passed, the two were finally married. However, Jacob had second thoughts about how Laman had played him for a fool. Jacob had forgotten one thing. What goes around comes around. It might take time, but it's coming, church. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever a man sowed, that shall he reap. It'll catch up with you. God can wait on you, church. He got time on his side. Due to Jacob's hard work, Laman had benefited and had gained a lot of stock and a great amount of wealth. After thinking the matter over, Jacob felt that Laman had played him like a second fellow. He felt he was the one responsible for Laman's great wealth. So one day, Jacob 
had a conversation with himself. And sometimes, church, it's good to talk to yourself. You remember the woman with the issue of blood? She said within herself, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, I know I will be made whole. So Jacob had a conversation with himself. Will, if I can do all this for him, why not do it for myself? So Jacob decided to part company with Laman. However, rather than let a good thing get away, Laman decided to pay Jacob for some of the work he had done. Like I said a few Sundays ago, nobody, I said nobody, have to tell you when you've done another person wrong. I said nobody will have to tell you if something in your mind you can't look folks in the eye. I know I see some folks when they shake hands with you. Saying, what's wrong with them? Can't even look you in the face. Give you that fishy handshake. But Jacob, rather than being outdone, made Laman a counter offer by asking Laman to give him some of his flock, especially the speckled, the spotted sheep, the black lambs, and the spotted and speckled goat. And that would be his pay. However, Laman made Jacob a counteroffer. See, when you're dealing with a trickster, they're always trying to pull tricks on you. Help me, somebody. They refuse to be outdone. So, Laman made Jacob a counteroffer. He said, well, I'll tell you what I'll do. If you continue to watch over my flock as you've done in the past, I will agree to give you all of the white sheep, livestock, lambs, and whatever. But you see, Jacob was always thinking and he came to the conclusion, if, Je if Laman's going to try to trick me, I'm going to out-trick him. So Jacob cut some branches from some poplar, hazel, and chestnut trees. After peeling off the bark until the stripes appeared, he placed the branches in the water trough. Now, watch this. When layman white farm animals drank from the water trough and made it, the babies were born with either some spots, some stripes, or were speckled. Jacob's animal had outproduced Laman's animal. It's right here in our text. 
And it came to pass at the time that the cattle conceived that I lifted up my eyes and saw in a dream and behold the cattle which leaped upon the cattle were rings striped speckles and grizzly. And I said, here am I. He said, lift up now thy eyes and see all the rams which leaped upon the cattle are ring scarred, speckled, and grizzled. For I have seen all that Laman doeth unto thee. God wanted Jacob to know it was him. It was him and not Jacob. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. It was him, not Jacob, for the reason that they were blessed. Are you going to pray with me? Are you still with me? In verse 13, we find Jacob still dreaming. As God said, I am. Yeah. Hear me now. Yes, I am. Yeah. In other words, undisputed. The God of Bethel. Right. Where thou anointed the pillar. Right. And where thou vows a vow unto me. Right. Now rise. Get thee out from this land and return unto the land of your kindred. Church, this is the first time in the Bible that we hear about this word anointing. Let me see if I can hook this thing up for you. Remember, when Jacob stole Esau's birthright and was running for his life. He spent the night, the first night, on the run in the desert and had his famous dream about the ladder and the angel. Now watch this, watch this, watch this, don't miss this, which he saw ascending and descend. Now that's kind of backwards to me. Because you usually descend and then ascend. But see, God has a way of working things out the way he wants to. So they were ascending and descending. Then in Genesis 28, 16 to 17, we find Jacob awakened out of his dream and says, surely, surely the Lord is in this place. And I knew it not. And he was afraid. When Jacob realized it was God who was talking to him, and church, if you are a child of God, you ought to be able to tell when God is talking to you. For the sheep knows his voice. In knowing it was God talking to him, he rose up early in the morning. And before he did anything else, he took that pillar he had used for a pillar. Now that tells me God can make a hard thing soft, make it palatable, where you can enjoy it. And Jacob poured all over this. By doing this, church, Jacob was acknowledging the presence of God. 
and was performing an act of worship. After Jacob anointed the stones, he changed the place from Luz to Bethel, which means God is in this place. I said, God is in this place. I said, God is in this place. Somebody missed it. I can't hear you. I said, God is in this place. Church, when anointing takes place, things can't stay the same. Somebody missed that. When anointing takes place, things can't stay the same. When anointing occurs, a change, I said a change is going to take place. Jacob changed the place from Luz to Bethel, which is composed of two Hebrew words, Bet, which means house, and El, which means God. Put them together, the house of God. Church, when you get anointed, you can't stay the same. Paul will tell you, when I was on my road traveling down Damascus, ready to tear up the church, but I got anointed on the way and turned from a persecutor to a proclaimer for my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Church, when you get anointed, your children can't stay the same. I said, when you get anointed, your children can't stay the same. John, the beloved apostle, will tell you he was a hothead and wanted Jesus to ring down fire from heaven on some mean-spirited folks. But when John got saved, we see John on the Isle of Patmos preaching, preaching, in the name of the Lord, anointing will change you. Won't he do it? I'm getting ready. I'm getting ready to say something. When you get anointed as the parents of your house, Satan can't stay there. Oh, yes, Satan got to go. All you have to do is give Satan his eviction notice. Kick him out. Tell him, Satan, you can't stay here no more. You got to go. You got to get up out of here. And another thing, you don't need a preacher or degree in theology. You can do it yourself. A believer has the power to be anointed. All you do is to recognize the presence and the power of God. The anointing will change things. Anybody here know what I'm talking about? Have you been changed? Have the angels in heaven change your name? Tell your neighbor, neighbor, I've been anointed. And I'm telling you this, it didn't take no all to get anointed. Only thing it took is for God's spirit to take a residence in my body. That's all it took. The next thing we see, Jacob entered into a covenant with God. He said, if God be with me and will keep me in this way that I go and will give me bread and raiment to put on so that I come again to my father's house in peace, 
then shall the Lord be my God. Now, I'm saying this, church, on behalf of my sponsors. Don't you dare make a vow unto the Lord that you don't plan to keep. Oh, somebody missed that. God has a good memory, and he will take you at his word. I remember when you made a covenant with me, Jacob, way back yonder, you said if I kept food on your table, and I did, if I put clothes on your back, and I did, then I will be your God. God remember. He remember what you vowed to do. So don't take it lightly. Have you been anointed and set apart as I come to a close? The root word for anointing is Messiah, which is the root word for Messiah, which is one of the names for Jesus. Jesus is the anointed one. He is the Messiah. That's why we don't have to bring any bullocks or sin offering to a priest. Jesus, I said, Jesus is my high priest. I said, Jesus is my high priest. The record said, I can go to him in prayer and leave my burden there. He has paid the price. We have been bought with a price. Covered by the blood of the anointed one. What can wash away my sin? Not tight. Not oxidal. Nothing. 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 But the blood. The blood. The blood. Woo! What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood. But the blood of Jesus. Have you been washed in his blood? Have you been washed in his blood today? Have you been washed? Have you been washed? Wash, wash, wash. He's all right. Can you say you're all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's all right. He's all right. Yeah, yeah. Nothing, nothing but the blood of Jesus. He's all right. Can you say, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been anointed. Have you been anointed? Tell your neighbor, I've been anointed. I've been anointed. I've been anointed. He's all right. Yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, hey. It's like fire, 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 shut up in my bone, and I tell you Charlie can do me like Jesus can. Nobody, 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 nobody. Yeah, yeah. Somebody wonder why I'm jumping. 
Jesus, I understand my problem. He's all right. He's all right. Do you know he's all right? I said, do you really know it? He's all right. He's all right. He's all right with me. I don't know about you, but I've been anointed. I said, I've been anointed. I've been anointed. Have you been anointed? Have you been anointed? See, when you've been anointed, you can't do stuff the same way. You can't act the same way. Because you, Eric, have been anointed. When you've been anointed, you don't have to tell nobody. They will see it. I don't care how low you have fallen. If that anointing is on you. Baby, you can get down all in the dirt. But if you've been anointed, God going to raise you. I said, God will raise you back up. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I said, anybody been down, been out? Folks, so you never be anything. You never know good, but God raise you up. Nobody but God can do it. The door of the church is open. There may be someone here. who have strayed or let your guard <laughs>